All right, guys. Uh, once again, I'm hitting you with another comic creator mm -hmm. chat. Uh, this week, I got Jonathan Hedrick on. Um, if you haven't been following Scout, you know that I love Scout, and I've been doing a lot of Scout reading here lately. And this guy is writing Recount, um, which we're going to talk about it because it's one screwed up story, but it's <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's an awesome screwed up story. I don't know if that's a compliment to you or not, but it's it is. It's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. I'm very excited to get a chance to talk to him and just sort of understand the, the purpose and everything behind the story and if there's a purpose. So I'm excited. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. But uh, I guess first thing, when the recount was coming out, mm -hmm. was it intentional? Because it came out the week of yeah. the elections or the week after. It actually got delayed a week. It was like... Yeah, that, that was a happy accident, I guess you could say. Um it definitely was never intended to it, it fell in order with all the other scout titles that came out and if you remember 2020 uh, especially the first half of 2020 scout was every week they announced another title another title mm -hmm. they really had had a push they weren't going to let um the trials and tribulations of the uh, 2020 slow them down if anything yeah. that helped uh you know to push a lot of indie books uh, oh, during yeah. the, the pandemic so it just fell into place with how many books were already in the can. Um, I, I want to think that they didn't want it to be on the actual week of election, uh, yeah. same week. And yeah, the, it was solicited for the 11th, which was the week after, but there was a, a snafu with distribution uh, yeah. and it got pushed back. But some stores did get it that week if they ordered it through Scout. But anyways, yeah, it, it was released very timely for sure. Yeah. Because I know I was doing, I got frustrated because I do the our new comic book day pull list, and I so mm -hmm. I go through and I list the books. I'm like, because yeah. this this variant is gorgeous. The the one for five, uh, it's actually behind you on the wall, but this one right yes. here yeah. is a great great variant. I was like, oh, Scarface, right. awesome, this is gonna be great. And <laughs> yeah. then it didn't come out the week I said it was going to come out, unless you mm -hmm. order from Scout, which is about a third of the stores uh, order directly from Scout. And I think more and more are starting to, but yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Of course, they just signed a deal with Lunar, so they might might change but, a little bit of that too. Yeah, um, whatever's clever, whatever works best for the stores. You know, that's I think that's the the primary purpose is, especially if, if you're um, a Florida store. You know, they're mm -hmm. shipping straight from Florida. You know, it, Diamond has to ship from wherever. Uh, yeah. You know, if you can get it straight from the publisher, cut off. You know, some middlemen. You know, you're not going to take any money out of Diamond's uh, mouth. That's yeah. for sure. Because I. I will say, like, I did a little research into you a little bit. Not, I, I haven't read the books, but I, I remember mm -hmm. Capable and Freak Show Princess, some mm -hmm. Kickstarters you did. But I remember yeah. seeing Freak Show Princess on my con LCS's store shelf. Awesome. So I'm guessing he mm -hmm. they reached out to you or somehow during the pandemic. Did you have stores like, reach out to you? And Yes. Yeah. The, uh, again, the pandemic, I, I um, took advantage of it, at, it, you know, to say that in the most humble way. Um, once diamond uh stopped distributing i joined this facebook group uh you may have heard of it called plan c distribution mm. um uh, a lot of people in the comic book shopping network are involved with it as well okay. and there's just stores are like we just need something new yeah. uh to to give to our people so i reached out i showed them the books that i had uh several shops all over the country uh were willing to take it at cost. And I, I was just breaking even. I just wanted to get it out there. Yeah. And be, because of that, I got my name out there more. I got a new audience. I built relationships with these LCSs and you know, it, it worked out. So it, uh, by the way, what store is that at? If I don't uh, Outer Limits Borough in Murfreesboro, yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chase, Chase, is that? Yeah. Great yeah, guy. He's, That's yeah, he's, awesome. He's really jumped into the mm -hmm. variant and the indie book market or whatever. So like, yeah, yeah. No, he, he did that. Uh, he had that one. I don't know if he had capable, but there are several yeah. books. I'm like, hey, wait, no, this like, especially <laughs> if there's scout, like I think murder hobo, he had like three months yeah. before it actually came out because of right. just the way distribution happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Great. I remember seeing that. And I don't know if there's another cover. This is just the one I found. There um, is a few other covers for that one. Yeah. That was a, um, uh, crowdfunded book i that was actually my first book i ever okay. self-published and uh this month uh the end of the month march 31st it's actually going to be reproduced in a black and white format in a Ooh. zombie anthology called mississippi zombie 2 by um caliber comics okay so 
uh, that's available through Diamond, and it's yeah. actually already available through Amazon. So okay, yeah, so. <laughs> that's always sort of fun. Like it's in a couple different places. The <laughs> yeah, but the best thing with, the, with Amazon does that keep track of the records like Diamond does, as far as like the number of sold and everything. I guess you know, but um, I think the publisher is going to uh, match those numbers together. Okay, yeah. So, but let's jump into the book that is the, the one mm. now. I mean, you have great covers. I mean, of course, this one that we just talked about, yeah. um, this one, the which the is, cover. I mean, for an A cover, I'm just like, oh, God, it's a freaking, like, I like yeah. it better. When I looked, I was like, okay, I like Scarface, mm. but <laughs> that main cover. And then I think the CBSN did a version of that. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the comic book shopping network. But yeah. do you have, do you like help make the decisions and all that? Like, do you guide those decisions? I, I do have the final like creative um, say in what covers they have to be rolled past me, but I've been fortunate enough to have so many cool artists uh, do uh, and so many great stores and, and other businesses that wanted to take a chance and pay for a cover to be uh, produced for recount, um, it, especially issue one. There was, I want to say eight or nine. Um, yeah. Sanct Sanctum Sanctorum did one with Ben Temple Smith. Yes. I mean, that's so gorgeous. Speaking of, you know, if I have a, a say or anything, I remember getting two different layouts from Ben and I'm like, it was just mind blowing. Like I am choosing artwork by Ben Temple Smith right now. That, that is yeah. where I'm at in life. <laughs> I just thought it was just a humbling experience. It was just so cool because I love 30 Days a Night. Uh, uh, you know, S Steve Niles is, uh, you know, a, a great writer. But yeah, yeah, really well, cool. And and this one is doesn't is not as Temple Smith as normal. It's great Correct. cover, mm. but it, I looked at I was like, "That's Temple Smith." Like, because yeah. he, he always has the orangish gold glare, but this mm. one actually has fire. It has a reason for it. Usually, it's just the back there and behind yeah. the, the image. Uh, it's a great cover. Um, I still yeah. think I actually lean towards your cover A, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a great cover. I don't have an. I actually have it beside me. The web store variant is just fun. Uh, yeah, that's that, the Rich Woodall from Electric Black did yeah. that. He's actually going to do a cover, a uh, web store exclusive for all four issues. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Uh, I just um, saw the layouts. Or I, I think he's complete with issue four. Um, but yeah, it, so there's going to be four of him. It's going to be, it's all a theme of the whole defacing national monuments. And okay. his, his colors just really pop. And yeah. uh, I, I'm really glad I got to work with him as well. That's really cool. And then you, I'm also seeing you do a movie somehow you end up with movie themes is that by yes. choice because that, you have this one which... yes yeah uh that's the um the heat variant cover uh which is um a store a local store in my uh neighborhood kingdom of comics mm. they did that so uh brian silverbacks who is doing all the um movie homage covers yeah me and him had a plan from the beginning um okay. and we laid out the four movie covers that he, um i is wanted this... that Yep, that's uh, Dead Presidents. That's going to be issue three. And um, I don't think fourth, I have the fourth one. Fourth one's not announced yet. Okay. <laughs> but it, it, soon. Okay. Because yeah. this one, and you're doing it through, I like the fact that it's through different shops. So, like, this me, is me too. Izzy's, and this yep. one you said was Kingdom of Comics. Right. And so, then the other, uh, Scarface was actually through Scout. But. Yeah. The, it was the retail incentive. So mm -hmm. that was that was the only one of the movie homage covers that were you got through Diamond or you could get it through Scout. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it kind of gives this uh, I, I mean, I, I, I have to lean into the whole speculating and investment yeah. collecting part of comics because that's half the whole industry. Um, so I like the kind of chase after it. You, you can't yeah. just you have to go find it. You know, mm -hmm. and that appeals to me as a collector as well. You know, yeah. it adds a little bit more excitement instead of just, you know, buying it from eBay and then you get, it, you know, uh, yeah. it also spreads the wealth too. the fact that one of my local comic book stores mm -hmm. was willing to buy 250 copies. You know, that was that's just really cool. Yeah. Uh, again, humbling. And we had a great turnout, too. We did this big signing. Mm -hmm. There were six creators there. Me, Brian, uh, my editor, who Andrea Molinari, who does the shepherd at Scout. Yes, it's a good uh, book too. Yeah, it, his son came out and um, uh, two other creators. Uh, so it, we just had this huge turnout. And the amount, one of the being the stores, I think they said second busiest day they've ever had. Wow. So 
Yeah, really cool. Yeah, that's well, and I like I'm up until I guess the past month, I have been eh, store variants until mm-hmm. I've started seeing like and, I mean, scouts started to do it. You guys have started doing it certain books, and then uh, something's killing the children blew the wa- the head. Yeah. Of, everyone's gone crazy about that. Department of Truth's blowing up, mm-hmm. but at the same time. Yeah, people are there's a percentage of people that are just collecting the covers, but yeah. you open up these books, and what I'm impressed by is you you not only have amazing covers, the art is freaking yes. amazing. Thank I mean, you. You, and your story's good, but the <laughs> art is, I'm an art guy, so I, yeah. I lean into it. But like, this is your opening page, and just like I right. wasn't quite expecting that because yeah. scout books a lot of times don't quite have the quality. I mean, I love the art in them, but mm. they're not not quite mm-hmm. what but this is like almost photo real i mean yeah. dude up here the, when you get the first see the mask you're like whoa mm-hmm. um, right yeah I, um i'm really fortunate to have worked with so many great artists the uh pencil and inker uh for the the recount gabriel ibera nunez I, I i picked him when i found came across his art on facebook because he can draw faces differently it's not the mm-hmm. same person and that it's really important in the recount yeah the characters have to be different uh and and he can do that and i and he does it with little art direction yeah. and then on top of it sunil sunil gaga who is my um colorist I, mm. he was my colorist on freak show princess as well he comes in and uh he just it's like i like to compare it to a rock band yeah. you know uh gabriel is the uh lead guitarist and then Snell drops this bass line that it just adds just so much more. Up. Right. And this is mind blowing. So <laughs> yeah, it all worked out in the perfect harmony. <laughs> well, so let's jump into the story. Cause the, mm-hmm. I mean, you chose a title that, that ended up being super controversial. If people just, I don't know if it was intended when you chose it and then, but you open it up and it's like, well, hell the entire story yeah. At least issue one. Now I ha- I'm issue two is coming in the mail because I'm waiting on this. I, or- mm. I ordered this and I'm waiting on it. Good. Yes. So uh, this is from the the e- ECGCE e- yeah uh, Patreon uh, collector group. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can find them. It's actually it has a recount Facebook group that I'm, I think you're a part of. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I've seen you post some stuff in there, but uh, I'm waiting on that to show up. So I'm like, I haven't cool. read issue two yet, but mm. I'm, I have it ordered. Um, but Issue ones is sort of I was caught off guard by how how much you were willing to do things where I'm like, yeah. oh hell, let's let's mark my territory where I stand politically and mm-hmm. what what I think should happen <laughs> to those people that live next door to me. No. Right. I mean, I don't know if you actually you don't actually you're not, but at the same time, that's what it feels like. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Well, my intention with the story was it to uh, for it to remain ambiguous to any type of side. Yeah. Um, I'm very apolitical myself. I, I don't um, uh, lean towards any any direction. So the book is not agenda based whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so a lot of pain was taken in the production of this to make sure no one looked like uh, a particular uh, politician. Mm-hmm. No one's name sounded like a politician. And some of the things that um, occur, yeah. or the blame that is put on these petitional poli- uh, poli- uh, politicians, I'm sorry, uh, are things that any politician might do. Yeah. You know, every uh, politician goes to war. Every president goes to war. You know, yeah. you, you can't say that it's, uh, oh, I'm saying it's this person or that one. There, there's no uh, hidden message whatsoever. It's, I like to call the genre an anti-political thriller because mm. this is more about the problems with the people that are in power no matter who they are, no matter yeah. what the sides are. It, and it's more about maybe we shouldn't have sides. We should take that line in the sand and we should just blur it what, yeah. and, and and shake things up a little bit. So, yeah, I really liked the uh, – I began the process of outlining the recount with the idea of what if people were held responsible for who they put into power? Would that change – your thought process. Would you still uh, vote for someone just because you saw a creative meme? Or maybe you would do a little bit more research on that. So, and then I went from there. <laughs> that, and see, and that it's one of those, like it happened issue one, you see that, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming I haven't read issue two, but like, I, I can tell it's going to go further and it's going to yes. deep it as you deepen, 
dive into it because the last page of the issue one is college. And here's like, right. oh, God. Oh, yeah. so you noticed that. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, because that's where mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of fun issues have been. Mm-hmm. That's where you start to make your own identity as, a, as your political mm-hmm. beliefs and your religious beliefs and all those different things. And it's done t- nowadays through memes or down th- right. th- whatever the latest TikTok video is or whatever. Um, yes. So uh, it's such a, but then you throw in the hyper violence yes. of, and I mean, it's so violent, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But January 6th happened. Yeah, unfortunately. Yep. Did, did you guys at Scout have to sort of talk and go, is this far enough away that people can tell this is fiction versus? Yeah, there wasn't any uh, discussion uh, formally uh, between me and Scout when that was going on. I think there was just an unsaid understanding that maybe uh, we, at least on my end, I, I intentionally didn't uh, push the book for a while, mm-hmm. um, especially with the cover art. Uh, like uh, issue two that has the White House and uh, oh, shoot, bottom the half. Is, yeah, the White House okay. on fire. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's, it's White House on top and the clown mask. Oh, up. yes. So I, I kind of t- took a step back from the promotion a little bit. So I don't know if that hurt the sales or anything like that, but I, I don't have respect for what was going on because I just didn't want to – Think people were uh, would think that I am capitalizing on such a terrible act. Um, yeah. I didn't want want and like I said before, I don't want anyone to think I have an agenda on this. And if I jumped on that, like, oh, you like what's happening at, uh, at the Capitol? Why don't you read this comic book I wrote? Then it just no, yeah. there's not a, a classy way of doing it. So I took a step back, w- waited for things to kind of cool down a little yeah. bit. Uh, and I w- made a couple, some focused decisions after that when I began to start promoting again on what I would uh, say and how I would present it. That's, I mean, I respect that. That's yeah. That had to be a delicate balance. I mean, if switching mm-hmm. into speculating market, like we, yeah. we on CBSI, we talk about, okay, if we know something bad happened, but we'll pump up that book will come out of it. That's popular. Like yeah. we do not want to say a word about it. We do not want to promote it because there's yeah. just taste involved. I exactly. Mean, there's so many things like, I mean, when Chadwick Boseman died, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. people quickly tried to sell his books for triple what they're worth. And you're just like, no, we're yeah. we as a site. We're like, we're not going to talk about it. We'll talk about the man, but we're not going to talk about books. Yeah. And spec on. Um, right. And that's it's a delicate balance because I mean we are we're, we do care about clicks we do care about mm-hmm. YouTube views I mean you care about sales yeah, right you, that would have increased sales but at the same time you would have lost people right and and you want people to like your stuff because of what you're doing and what you're exactly writing and that yeah because this is your first is this your first book under a publisher yes yep. So I don't want to uh, take anything for granted. You know, cancel culture is a thing. You, mm-hmm. uh, you could be going to write about things the with the um, best intentions in mind, and it'll it could still happen. So it, this isn't a Christmas book that I'm trying to push during you know October, November, December. This yeah. is heavy material. Um, at, again, it's not agenda based, but people can find things that they want to look for. You stare at the clouds long enough, you're going to see whatever you're looking for, you know? Yeah. So uh, I, what I'd rather people get out of it is an entertaining story that's, uh, you know, a, a little bit on the heavier side, but at the, it's still entertainment at the end of the day. You don't, I'm not asking you to go out there and change your bumper sticker or whatever. Yeah. And I think, and I think you accomplished that. I mean, Thank you. I read I read into of my political mm-hmm. leanings and I've mm-hmm. and I mean you can't help but do that. You can't help but right. read with but at the same time when I listen to you talk, I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? Yeah, there's an image of a hat on a table. Right. And but but I are I'm not trying to shoot my head. I'm thinking <laughs> um, I was already uh mm-hmm. leaning that way, but at the same time, now that you say that, now that I read through it a little bit closer, because mm-hmm. I read through it a second time today, and I'm like, mm-hmm. it doesn't, it's just politics. The politician screwed up, and we're saying, "Yo, you voted this dude in. Mm-hmm. You need to be accountable for that." And that's a scary thought to think through, because yeah. I, when I think of, there's politicians on both sides of the line, yeah. and there's not just politicians. There's people we idolize mm-hmm. on both sides of it, and like to be able to say, "Hey, I, 
I elected him. I hired him. I you, there is there should be some sort of accountability to that. Yeah, right? yeah, it, it's a spooky concept. And, and for me to want to push a certain side, I would alienate half an, an audience. So yeah. why don't I uh, form a story where any side would be able to read it without you know feeling um, you know that there's something being forced upon them? Yeah, because. The, the more I, th yeah, the more I think about them, like your clown rebellion people, I don't know, mm -hmm. the, the, your posse, the masses, there, yeah. the masses mm -hmm. could easily, I could look at January 6th and the masses could feel mm -hmm. like they could identify as be one of the people going into the Capitol, right. or it could be the opposite side of it and go be, okay, we're, we're taking care of the, it's like, oh, it could be any uh, side of that. And it's sort of freaking awesome and scary at the same time. Right. Uh, I think through that. But let's switch back to the comic because the comic is great and I Thank love you. what it is. Sorry, I get I'm sorry. political, and if you watch my, <laughs> any of my interviews, I've, I've interviewed everybody, and somehow we get political real mm. fast because I've interviewed some uh, just people that write great stuff. And yeah. uh, anything that's that's why I like reading, talking to you guys that do indie books because you can put your heart and soul and your personality, and mm -hmm. you can bring up issues that if I write Spider Man. I get blown blasted if I make Spider Man think about homosexual thought for a moment, sure. or if. <laughs> Right. Uh, those types of things. Um, you like you said, you have some ridiculous covers. Let's run through some of them that I have because they're amazing. Cool. Yep. Yes, that's uh, Neil Nelson. He is a tattoo artist on uh, I want to say Winter Springs, Florida. Um, I, I'm I'm based on a Florida as well, and there's a, surprisingly enough, there's a lot of cities that start with winter. Um, mm -hmm. Ironically. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, that was that was a really cool cover because um, it gets the whole theme. The, yeah. Uh, the Statue of Liberty with the clown. I get asked a lot too. Is it a bloody nose or is it a clown nose? It's supposed to be a clown clown nose, but it, it also kind of works that it's kind of running down her face. Yeah. yeah. That's a great one. Um, let's see what else I have. I didn't catch them all because some of them are hard to find. Um, yeah. We already talked about this the, this one from Izzy's. I love this one. Um, yeah, that's Zilla, coming out of the Silverbacks ones, it's probably my favorite that I've seen. Uh, this is just uh, a regular it, cover. It, it, issue three, yeah, from the interior artist, uh, Gabriel Nunez. Uh, I love <laughs> that, that one, powerful. man. And, and with him, I gave him no art direction on any of the covers that he did. He just was like, boom, here you go. I'm like, yep, that that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, mm. this is, I'm like, I'm, I'm one issue three now. When does issue three come out? The seventeenth, St. Patrick's so, Day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Too bad yeah. this is not green cover. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should do a green foil just for St. Oh, Patrick's yeah. Day. That'd be uh, awesome. <laughs> but uh, that's a gorgeous cover. Um, and then you, yeah. I think I found f issue four. Yes. Yep. That's the uh, fourth issue. Also, the cover artist is Gabriel Nunez. Um, I like this one because it uh, has a Sandman uh, mm -hmm. vibe to it. And it also makes me think of the band Tool, you know, with like nice. their, their their crazy uh, videos from the nineties. Oh man, so, that that claymation yeah. one, that oh, yeah, freaking yeah. ridiculous. Uh, crazy. Those are actually the covers. I know there's more covers out there, of course. And then, how did you pull off a second print cover that's just fabulous? That's also uh, Gabriel, and that that's uh, one of my favorite covers. Oh my god, uh, yeah, that second print with him holding up the two, as in you know, yeah. second print. Uh, <laughs> I love signing on that one because I, I do this thing with the, my pens to mm -hmm. uh, almost stealing from Clayton Crane's infinity pen style on that one with, with the pastels. It just really, really, really cool. And I, I love that cover. And I'm, I especially like it because it's the icing on the cake. I got a second print on my first issue. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just so cool. Well, I know I talked to, I interviewed uh, James Hake, mm -hmm. like I guess the, the week that it was confirmed that, their plan worked of taking two months between issue one and issue yeah. two. And he goes, yep, because we got second prints ordered for recount and for Frank mm -hmm. on the farm. And mm -hmm. I, I think those are the two, there might've been a second, a third one that had a second print, but yeah. he, he basically goes, our numbers are better from waiting those two months. It's sort of, it had yeah. to suck as a, the writer going, I have to wait to talk. I can't talk about my next issue. Just yet. Uh, <laughs> well, it, 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 everything fell into place for me, especially with what I was doing in my personal life. I mm -hmm. ran um, a Kickstarter campaign uh, mid December through January, and that was in between the issue one and two of the recount. Was so that, that the was, third issue of this or the second yeah, issue? Yeah, the third issue of Capable. Um, I, I ran that in between the release of issue one and two of recount, which gave me 
time to pause on promoting recount and focus on promoting my Kickstarter campaign. So it all you know, works in mysterious ways. What, I, I know Kickstarter is a lot more hustle that you have to do. Oh, which yeah. You guys on the scout side hustle all the time too. Like, yeah. Yeah. Which, which, how can you talk about the differences since you're doing both at the same time still? Yeah. Um, well, I, I work off of the philosophy that if I'm not marketing my comics the most, then I'm doing something wrong. Mm. Um, I can't blame a, a failure if I wasn't the one um, promoting it more than anyone else. So the difference is that um, it, it helps uh, with Scout that, you know, to get a, a retweet and a share from them. Yeah. I'm not going to get that much from a, uh, a Kickstarter campaign. Um, but the, I, some people do share uh, and um, retweet the, the promotions for Kickstarter as well, but they may not travel as far. Yeah. Um, and, and I have to, I keep a, a journal um, when I'm running a Kickstarter of mm -hmm. where I promoted uh, and the time of day and everything. Cause I don't want to be that guy. I'm sure you backed Kickstarter campaigns or have friends that have run it and you get like eight notifications of all these groups that they posted in one minute. Like, Oh yeah. I don't want to be that guy. I make sure that I, uh, I don't post in the same group um, twice in a week. Uh, I separate my posts by at least an hour, um, but I'm not promoting that much with the recount. Uh, yeah. Maybe one uh, every other day or something like that. And I try to get more clever with the what the image looks like, maybe add a quote from the book, uh, slap a filter on the cover. So. Yeah. Well, and the with recounts, you get stores that want to get your covers and they want us so now they're promoting it and they throw those images up and yeah. like like I was like I was talking to ECGCE I was, mm -hmm. uh, I was talking with him and just talking about how that promoting process of trying to get the cover out there how do you put the mm -hmm. cover out there there's things that I'm mm -hmm. slowly learning like mm -hmm. I have CBSI's power mm -hmm. behind me because yeah. I write for them I do interviews for them and stuff but mm -hmm. getting my own Instagram account up and running and having people follow me and people like what I post and knowing yeah. what words work and what words don't get me in trouble. And I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. And I can't imagine like, how do you hashtag recount? And I was, I, I was concerned about that. I, um, a couple of months ago, I want to say back in November, I got a notification from Instagram saying that some of my, um, some of my posts may not, may not have, been shared out uh, because I use the hashtag that hashtag I'm like oh, come on man um, <laughs> so uh, uh, I noticed that some of them were getting likes maybe more or less so did they the algorithm change did they share it less than others I don't know but uh, there was a point where I was stopped I stopped using like the hashtag the recount yeah. and use other things like scout comics and indie comics things like that you got to get creative yeah so. well and that's what I was uh, interviewed uh, Car uh, Kari, Kari, like a dog. Kari Randolph and Brandon Thomas who wrote Excellence and mm -hmm. they were talking about like okay what hashtag like having to have create a brand name so like yeah. theirs became Excellence is real because mm -hmm. Excellence doesn't really bring you anything I mean like, yes. like they didn't say that but I mean Excellence can be anything just like recount right. can mean anything so you have to go recount comic but okay right. are your followers or people that buy the comic going to realize they have to hashtag recount comic to yeah. bring in the same view. I mean, it's, it's a f oh, interesting game thinking through how to draw eyes and, yeah. um, but, but at the same time, your story is so good and it, it writes itself into, I don't see, I mean, you wrote it in a way to where I could s see a, a really awesome Netflix action film uh -huh. movie but not yeah. necessarily a, a TV show unless it, unless the issue one, two and three and four change. So I'm like, <sighs> eventually this has to end. They, they, these guys <laughs> can't win the entire, I mean, yeah. there's been some shows where guys win the entire show, but like, that's like 24. And then there's right. just the 24th episode. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's been compared to 24, you know, uh, mm. I, I've heard that I, I may have used it too, just as a very quick um, elevator type pitch to uh, people. Um, with like the whole um, spy type uh, intrigue with it, but I yeah I, I would love to see it in a like a four part hour hour and a half each episode type streaming network 
thing. I think that would do really well. You know that, but I might be that might be pie in the sky. But <laughs> but uh, I mean, the nice mm -hmm. thing is with scouts having that contract and mosaic, mm -hmm. you got guys that can they can know who to go pitch your stuff to, just like they pitched yeah. um, Electric Black to the guys who did Rick and Morty, mm -hmm. and they pitched. Yeah. I, the, a book I couldn't believe that they got optioned forever maps got optioned. I'm like, yeah. okay. I, Cause I didn't personally enjoy it, but it's actually mm -hmm. that when, when, uh, what's his face. Shoot. Um, Stickney. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, when Charlie said, he told me, he's like, yeah, no, it, because it makes sense as a show. I was like, you yeah. know what it does. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think it did, but it does. like, uh, right. uh, it's just really cool. Like talking through, but, See, I hate that. I wish I'd read issue two. I'm waiting for it in the mail. Uh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting on the foil to come to, to my mind taking a little longer than the, uh, the rest of them. I should have well, just picked it up at the store. But, I, I can't. I can say that I I didn't intentionally write it with a, a show or a, an option in mind. I, yeah. You know, it, I went in writing it comic books yeah. format. Um, not to say that it, it, things aren't adaptable to uh, that other medium. Yeah. But um. Uh, you know, we we've all uh, watched comic book shows and, and comic book movies that have bastardized the uh, source material, um, and some that have pulled it off very well with by taking the correct amount of liberties as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, if it gets adapted, I would love to see that, and I hope that it's received very well. Well, it's also tricky with a book like yours. I mean, mm -hmm. same thing happened to Old Guard. Mm -hmm. A great comic, a great book, but doesn't mean that people are going to end up going, you know what, I read Old Guard, or yeah. I watched the Old Guard movie. Well, I don't know if you like that or not, but yeah. that doesn't mean that I'm going to go buy the comics after watching the movie. I'm just going right. to wait for the sequel. Like Your book reads as if it could stand alone as a movie, and yeah. people might not realize the source material. There are a lot of, yeah. which I hate to say that, but you know, mm -hmm. like, that's not a bad thing for you. It's an option. Right. You get the, you get to write your next book. Um, you yeah. Know? But uh, it's, I don't know. It, when I think through, cause I like, it's not Jarthy. This is the boys or whatever. Like it doesn't continue yeah. on uh, that title or maybe it does. I haven't gotten to three, four, <laughs> two yet. So maybe it continues on. They go on to the next country to destroy. Slash <laughs> the next one's in Venezuela. So. <laughs> well, it, there, I do have a plan for three volumes total. Oh, wow. Um, so, f and four issues each with maybe some one shots, prequels, side stories. But um, the intent is 12 issues total, pulled okay. over three uh, different volumes uh, with four issues each with uh, time gaps in between okay. those, those volumes. And of course, uh, it being an indie book and, um, you know, I have to uh, pay for the production yeah. through it, uh, it, I would need to take a, a break between those mm. uh, as well to, to produce it. So my, so, yeah, my plan is another volume for sure. But so, but because you went through scout, mm -hmm. I'm assuming your print numbers are quadruple mm -hmm. what they were for freak show princess or oh, yeah. capable. I mean, but mm -hmm. like, where do you feel like I, it's hard to get a read on like scout? I think a good certain number is like, if you sell out, that means you hit 5,000 or you hit 7,000. Like yeah. what was the print run for your issue one? I mean, yeah. it's, it's sold out because it's still at the store, but it's like fifteen dollars now. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact uh, numbers that it uh, the publisher requires, uh, mm -hmm. or will say. Okay, this um, uh, necessitates a second print, but I, I want to say it was between the main cover and the uh, retail incentive. There was at least over five thousand sales. Okay. I, I, and I'm pretty sure that was just the diamond numbers, not including the. The scout number so okay. five thousand for a small print no, publisher that's, that's something to shake a stick at uh, no it's in a I mean, mm -hmm. i feel like scouts hit it out of the park here lately but like mm -hmm. your book was one of the that i oh, was in november those november books showed mm -hmm. that hey scout has not is doing something right and it was like yeah. one two three four books all came out at that time that some of them were like uh, third and fourth prints or not third mm -hmm. third and fourth issues of series and all of a sudden, it starts selling out. It, it eats what it can feed, or uh, mm -hmm. all. I don't even know how many of those you you get to take a chance to read. But like I, I every tried. month, mm -hmm. every month, you guys have had a book. And I mean, mm -hmm. recount number two just came out last week or two weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, and then you got, but I like the idea of four issues, so it's easy enough to where I can track mm -hmm. them down if I can, 
Yeah. And you get a chance to read it. Then you get the chance to go, okay, recount two or count it again. Or however you want it. If, it, <laughs> if it's like that live free and die harder and right. uh, different die hard versions of the title. Yeah. But, sorry. I'm, it's one of those, like, I'm weirdly excited. And I'm like, damn it. I wish I could read the book yeah. right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So is, so it comes out March 17th. Uh, what yeah. else do you want to, what else do you want to talk about? I mean, yeah. Uh, well, I'm really excited uh, about the, um, the, the ECGCE cover, obviously, we, we mentioned it before, but that's um, the M MJ Hiblin um, cover is just awesome. The, um, was, I'm really glad that I was able to get on board with that because I was following the other groups that Ben's a part of, like um, the Something's Killing the Children and uh, Department of Truth, Phantom Star Killer. I, I'm like, man, I, I want a Facebook group, too. <laughs> So I actually started the Facebook group myself. Oh, and, nice. And then Ben was like, hey, I usually ask people if I can do this. So you already got it started. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, here, here's the admin privileges. <laughs> Help me out, please. <laughs> and, and then things just worked out from there. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and I, again, that Kingdom of Comics variant, the, mm -hmm. um, that one has a special place in my heart because that's a, a local store to me that, took a chance on they, they ha, they've done store exclusives but not at that level they've done yeah. um self-published store exclusives much smaller numbers but 250 is a lot for you know they're they're not um you know mile high comics or sanctum yeah. sanctorum they're 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 still trying to make a name for themselves so they're doing that they use the recount as a stepping stone to see if they can get up there to to that level so uh, so that's had, a, a pleasure. You know, if they still have any of those left. Yeah, I, I believe they um they they might have some left on their website. Yeah, that's I mean, and that's that's my thing is like I it's I love finding some of especially the indie comics. You can sometimes find them still left at the store. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if you can figure out where the website is. Yeah, Kingdom uh, of Comics. Uh, uh, find them on Facebook. Yes, or here it on, is. On the interwebs. Yep, they have them at the website. You can go and I'll, I'll drop the link on the site if you Thank want to you. check it out. They're they're twenty dollars, so I mean, a good price for a variant. And then I think mm -hmm. a signed copy is just like five dollars more. I yeah, I think, I think we left them at that signing with um, Sigs with just my signature, double Sig with me and Brian Silverbacks, the cover artist, and there's a few triple Sig because my editor was signing that day too. Um, so, how often do you get a triple Sig book? <laughs> Well, yeah. not only that, there is, uh, I don't know how many of they, they have of this. There's a remark copy. Yeah. Brian, uh, uh, remarked on a lot of them too. So, so that, that, that's what I love. And I, I mean, I could care less about not, some books. I want CGC. I like yeah. getting signatures, especially when like, I like getting a signed book now. Cause I've talked to you. So I'm like, I know yeah. him somewhat. I want a signed book. Right. Like, <laughs> that, that, that means more to me. Or when I have a remark book, Hey, I actually yeah. have, shoot. I think I have a uh, Garrett gun. He, uh, sent me some books from a uh, Franklin and ghost. And I have a, his box because he drew the freaking Franklin on the cut on the box. I'm like, it's not nice. worth anything. It's a, it's not even a great drawing, but it's from him yeah. to me. So I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, Personal touch to it. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it means like when I whenever I went and got book signed, it was I'm never gonna get them CGC. I'm not gonna resell them. Yeah. It's a book for me because I talked to you and had a conversation yeah. with you. Exactly. Um, yeah. But that, that's really cool. Yeah. So Kingdom of Comics, you can go get those. There's there's still some available. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great cover. I do like it a lot. And then I know Izzy's is almost sold out. Uh, the, yeah. The foil sold out. And, and keep in mind, that's good. there's going to be four of them. So if you want to complete the whole movie poster set by Brian Silverbacks, you're going to have to go through. You have to get that Scarface one. I think that, that one's up to like $25 already yeah. by now. The mm -hmm. Kingdom of Comics one. And then Izzy's. And then... The fourth one, which uh, <laughs> Brian and I will announce uh, soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's that, that's, that's cool. awesome. And then, yeah, so yeah, that's where and shoot. I mean, but once again, I want this cover as much as the Dead Presidents yeah. one there. Uh, yeah. I, but also, I like the fact you chose movies that I'm like, dude, okay, you chose Scarface. Okay, that's a no brainer. But then you chose Heat. I, I don't think yeah. of Heat right away. And then you chose Dead President, which is a gorgeous cover. Mm -hmm. but I yeah, wouldn't the, have thought of that right away either outside of the, they wear mask. <laughs> right. I mean, I've seen Scarface covers before mm -hmm. on a few books. I know dry foot over at mad cave um, had one, but that, and that really fit the theme. Cause that's a Miami storyline. Yeah. Um, 
some of the movies we chose either had uh, like the appeal to it, the image, or and or um, was um, relevant to the things that were happening in that issue. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so that's yeah. Sorry, it's one of those I, mm-hmm. I geek out trying to talk and think through, and like, yeah. and then I know you know a lot that you can't actually share <laughs> because yeah. you're like, okay, I want to build up the suspense, or I can't reveal the cover even though I've seen it because <laughs> right. the artist gets first dibs or the store gets first dibs. Uh, yes, I think yeah. I did. Uh, speaking hard. of out of limits, bro. I, we were interviewing uh, David Naki, Nakiyama, and he literally was dropping the cover for that store's the, the next day. And he's like, I can show, let me ask them for permission. I was like, but I know them. And so yeah. we had to like work out, a, end up making a commercial talking about the cover before we could yeah. reveal it. So, but uh, yeah. It, yeah. Like I said, I, I've been uh, fortunate enough to all these co- cool covers. Even Alan Qua did a cover. Oh, uh, nice. The uh, from the Comic Con line, that one that's an awesome cover. Uh, that I don't even have comps left of that one. People wanted <laughs> that one so much. Uh, I and I brought them with me to the signings and they just went like that. So, oh, wow! Yeah, well, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, once again, this is mm-hmm. comicbookinvest.com. Uh, check out the article, check out all the different stores. I'll try to, have, I'll try to drop in just like I've been doing for department of truth and, uh, something killing children, all the different variants, uh, that so far for, so just issue mm-hmm. one and issue two and the threes that we, that he'll tell me that we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, and whenever fours are built, it might pop into the article too, but, uh, we'll see, mm-hmm. but, uh, thank you guys.